You know, the one thing, Dean, Dean's our special guest, Dean McDermott, by the way, from Canada to here in Westlake Village. Thank you, Ty, for giving us this Blue beautiful in studio. Blew in specially for this. Blew in specially for this. For you, via dirt bike with a big lump. He's got a big <laughs> lump on the side. I never knew That's about the lump before when you were that great lover, I remember, from yes. the past. Yes. I don't remember. I, <laughs> oh, there's I, a lump. Yeah. Anyway. I, I, so, tuck, I tuck my lump. <laughs> he tucked the lump. <laughs> Sense of humor is very important very to you. Very important. Have you been in sitcoms? I have not done a sitcom. Get out. Yeah. Uh, I've been an actor for 37 years now, and I have not done a sitcom. Sitcoms didn't, don't exist in Canada. We had one, and it was, it was horrible. We had a couple, and they, yeah, they wow. just didn't fly. So this the sitcom is, never I existed never in Canada. never knew this. Yeah, it never existed in Canada. And how do you find mental health to be in Canada compared to the United States? A lot of our show is about mental health and how we deal with our mental, spiritual, emotional health. Is it different there? I always hear about the obviously the socialized medicine is different and the healthcare system is different. Well, do you find that people are healthier? I know you've lost both parents died at mm -hmm. young ages, but how do you find that to be? Is there a difference? I, I haven't noticed a difference. No, you know, I, I did. Uh, you know, I've been diagnosed with uh, clinical depression, uh, and and that was in Canada when I lived in Canada. That was like. 30 years ago, 35 See, years ago. See, cross the border, it's not there anymore. And it's gone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I show, as soon as I showed them my passport, I got my green card. I think there's something to be said about card. diagnosis. I really do. I, I mean, and I'm not sharing from some opinion. This has been my experience. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease, for instance. Okay. Now, if I embrace that diagnosis and lived with that diagnosis, what am I telling my body and my mind and my spirit? What am I telling? Oh, yes, you have you this. Have it, yeah. Right. And then one day I said, no, you don't. And I started a process of my own recovery in this. And we're going to talk about your alcohol recovery. But that's the same thing with alcohol is you're now telling yourself, no, I have a solution. And here's my solution. Here's my medicine where you're not drinking or using anymore. And the same thing at Crohn's disease. It said it was incurable. I don't have it anymore. It starts with mindset. So your mindset, where my, what mindset did you have to get to to stop doing drugs and alcohol? What kind of mindset did you have to switch? And how did it happen? The, that was the day you said, I've had enough. First off, the, the, the uh, mental health issue, like I, I have bipolar disorder and depression, and I've, and, and drinking and, and using and not, you know, I've, I've had, I've, I've taken medications in, in both scenarios. And it, it was through trial and error and not being on them, being on them, being on them sober, being on them in my addiction that I did narrow it down that I do need medication. I do have these things. And I understand what you're saying completely because it's almost like once, once you're told you have something. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, and exactly. You start to believe it. And, yeah. and I believe in, you know, when you talk to your body, it, it can go into the cellular level, like negative self-talk. Yeah. You know, I think it goes. Into well, including cellular. diagnosis. And you know, you hear the word diagnosis. bipolar, that bipolar now goes into your right. cells. Okay, I am. Right. And therefore, I'm not saying that people aren't. I'm saying that I do believe there is a mind over matter right. thing, and I do believe it but starts me, with the mindset. Right. But for me, you know, having that diagnosis and then, you know, using medication and going off it and using, I, I need it. Mm -hmm. I need it. And I, and it's clear that I have bipolar disorder and depression. Now, I, couldn't I, you I, also say I needed alcohol and drugs? I, uh, I needed it. I, I didn't need it. I needed. But it, you but said once, that you did at the time. Once I put it in. You said you needed it at the time, right? Isn't that what, what propels you into drinking and using? I need this. I need this to medicate myself because I am so right, miserable. Right I'm so the, upset. Right out of the gate, it wasn't that. It was, you know, to, you know, peers to fit in. You know, everybody was drinking. But you needed but it to my, fit in. But That's what I'm saying. You right, needed, needed it to it, fit in. I needed it to, to fit you in. You weren't not drinking. lubricant, but right. the difference is, is I have an allergy to alcohol. Right. I can't just, you know, my, my body changes, my mind changes, the right. reward system in my body changes because I have the disease of alcoholism and addiction. Right. So you can drink one beer and be fine. I put one in, you know, the saying one's too many, a thousand is not enough. I can't stop at one. Right. You know, so that is, it's I the think, behaviors the of the, the addiction has it, been, but the behaviors up. associated with it, that's something that drives one to stop it. And those behaviors, yes. which become masked. Yeah, so my behavior, just to, to go back to your question, um, I finally just burnt everything down to the ground yet again for like the 50th time. Mm -hmm. You know, since I started blackout drinking at 16, 
you know, anything that I built up for myself, career, relationships, family, wives, friendships, I, I would build up and have this great life. And then I'd burn it to the ground, self-destruction, the mindset of mm. the self-loathing and the hatred for myself and how have you spiritual shipped, malady uh, yeah emptiness exactly, exactly. That i had in my in, in in my soul wasn't being filled because i i had no self-love i had no self-respect right and i didn't want to sit in those feelings anymore how are you so getting I, that I, now I, how are you getting that self-respect how are you how have you switched and turned that around because it still comes up it comes it up does. every day self-loathing comes up every day uh self-obsession comes up every yeah. day yeah. how do you deal with it where does it go you can't just make it go away or say go away. There has to be some process. I have to, that's the thing is I have to process these things in a different way now. Yeah. I can't process life coming at me on, on life's terms the same way I did when I was in my addiction. Cause I was just full of anger, hatred, self-loathing. So I, I, that's how I would process everything, right? Life would come at me and I would process it and blah, I'd spit it back out as bile right back at you. Cause that's all I had. Mm -hmm. So now having a spiritual practice, having a higher power, turning my will and my life over to the care of God as I understand him, believing in something greater than myself, helps and, and, me, and, and, gives me hope. And, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's, a lot of people think it's a crock of shit. I certainly did for years. Self-love. And how self love is so and what important. what do, how do you define self love and how do you define what your higher power is because a lot of people have a problem when they hear the word God they think religion they think yeah. punishing God they think sin and things like that it certainly kept me you know from having that understanding of what a higher power of right. God is how did that work for you how did you get past those thoughts that you've had in the in the past that say God's full of it how why would God do this why would God do that you know these tragedies and things like that how do you work that out what kind of God do you go to? My, the God of my understanding is bereft of religion, mm -hmm. right? He's not Catholic. He's not Christian. He's not, he's not, it's just an enlightened being that wants God is enlightenment to you. Enlightenment to me is an enlightened being. Yeah. His teachings were to be enlightened just like him. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, you know, all these, you know, it wasn't all these laws and all these, these things that I find, I find organized religion to be very um, hateful. And intolerant mm -hmm. and that doesn't work for me doesn't work if it works for you great but that doesn't work for me and that's what i thought you know god was and a higher power was you know you know what i've done in my life is i agree with that i i, I agree and I, I i believe that god is limitless mm -hmm. abundant pure absolute love it's gigantic it's magnificent and i add one thing to it and that's the power of laughter Absolutely. I, my goal is there's comedians are very cynical and cut off and sarcastic. And many spiritual people think you need to sit on a rock in Sedona no. for your enlightenment. No. That's the only way to do it. You have to hold your hands a certain way. You no. have to clasp your hands. A namaste. I don't even know what the word means, but it all it has to be Sanskrit or something ancient. No, it's very present. It's very mindful. It's very conscious. If you can get to that place. So my goal is to build a bridge from the woo woo to the ha ha <laughs> have the ha ha people understand you are spiritual you have yeah. god because it's truth and you're exposing truth and have the spiritual people understand that you are funny you are fun and you can have more fun with your life if you take laughter seriously Agreed. and not your stinking life that you think is so important so self-important that's not self-care by the way it's the opposite when you think something's you deem something to be so important you, that's, that's a form of control but it's letting go is part of the self-care yeah, absolutely the surrender surrender, surrender S exactly is, has been a huge part of greatest recovery. victory greatest victory yeah it, it surrender i surrendered this time because again I, I i found myself i burned everything to the ground again and i was just like okay i can't i'm 56 i can't live like this anymore and clearly my self-will i don't know how to live i don't know how to be a husband i don't know how to be a father i don't know how to be a normal person and I was just like, I kind of handed it all over and said, I need help. I give up. I, I, I'm going to, I don't like to get into opinions, but I'm just going to share one experience with you. And I'm so happy that you're in this place. My, my beloved, <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> I'm so happy you're in this place. I feel so good for you. Stop when you're you making would, my when, lump bigger. When you would, <laughs> there's Viva next to me. So <laughs> there's Viva with a tail. So, so. I just, I'm so happy for you because I must tell you, I'm just going to share something with sure. you. And maybe this will help you 
kind of approach something is like that's kind of like a, a bottom. I did notice when we went to Fourth of July together as families, and I noticed the um, I noticed you noticing me with my family having glee and joy. And I also and tell me if I'm wrong about this. I kind of noticed you had a little bit of sadness that you wished that you were bringing this to your children, like the playfulness, the playing, the running, the chasing, and stuff like that. Is that my imagination? Or is that no, what I? No, that's bang on. That's bang okay. on. Because I wasn't present. I was there. there. There you go. I was there, but I wasn't yeah. present. And, Thanks and, for having the courage to admit that. I, I oh, really appreciate you for that. And you know, now I'm an, and open, I, I, I'm an I, open book. Yeah. So. Well, that's great. And, and, and listen, that's the that's the big step in any recovery process in anything in life. Doesn't have to be drugs and alcohol. And any you, it's the admissions of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't present. And by the way, if you told me that about something I had with my children, I go, you're absolutely right. Because I'll get into I'll get into texting somebody because I'm angry and I want them to change or something. I'm completely detached. Yeah. I'm not I'm not de I'm not attached to the be to the beingness to the wonderment of having children and having playful time with them. And I do remember that we had that Fourth of July, and I and I think the the kids even said something like you know you know Dad you know come run with us or something like that. But you know well my kids were running around with you yeah. and your kids yeah. and it, I was just I was just looking for the bar. <laughs> I was. There was there was drinks there. I was just looking for the bar. Yeah, I didn't give a fuck about anything but myself. Isn't it great you get to tell that story yeah. now because you're not that way anymore, yeah. okay? No, not at all. I congratulate not you on all. your sobriety, brother. I'm so Thank happy you. you came on as as a guest today because you have turned your life around and you're turning your life around, which is fantastic. And if I can add one thing to yes, which is please. what you don't know about either is is I work in recovery now. Oh, that's I'm, awesome. Yeah, I'm a drug and alcohol counselor and I work in treatment centers with other addicts and alcoholics and I, I help spread, you know, my experience, strength and hope with them. And, and it's a wonderful thing to be able to do. I, I love it. That's the way to give back. Being of service is such a key Absolutely. to our recovery, Absolutely. get out of ourselves. And that is part of self care. That's the odd thing about self care. It's not about self. It's about giving of yeah. self. And then that comes back. I hope that's what, uh, that's what people got from this. I hope so too. Uh, you know, I mean, if, if you're out there and you're having a difficult time, uh, check, check this out. And by the way, spread the word because we really are about solution. The guests that we're having, my next guests, not, uh, I'm going to pretend it's another day, but I'm just going to change my <laughs> shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's honesty. You got to be uh, rigorously yeah. honest, right? Exactly. And rigorously honest. They told us, don't look at each other. This is not a good it's, look. It's hard, yeah. <laughs> it's hard, it's hard, it's hard to, to keep look. my eyes off of this guy. I mean, look at this. <laughs> I mean, really. All right. Well, there's beaver on your shirt. <laughs> you better change it. There's beaver. <laughs> so um, I'm so happy you all checked us out. Please spread the word. And spreading the word about this isn't something about selfish for me because the intention of this very strong intention is to uh, break free of some of these divisions that we have in life, some of these, these restraints that we put on ourselves and others. And let's break free and have a good time and laugh. Remember to take laughter seriously and uh, have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> take laughter seriously. I like that. And take laughter seriously and you won't break your glasses anymore. Yeah. Okay. On a I golf still course. Have those glasses. We're supposed to be so Yeah, they're fixed all taped them. up. I fixed Looks them. like yeah. Revenge of the Nerds. He he's, he's like he's on the like slap shot. <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. We'll see you next time.